earliest childhood sporting memory is playing rounders at Rainbow School. I remember being really competitive. I was tiny, but I was really strong. And I was probably one of about three of the children that could hit the ball somewhere near the roof of the school. And that's what we always tried to do. We wanted to slog it as far as we could, not just so that we could get our home run, but actually to see who could hit the ball the furthest and they were fantastic. Anything at all, whether it was a, a three-legged race, Wellington throwing, wheelbarrow race, that stereotypical primary school sports day activity for me was unbelievable, loved it. And it led itself to the fact that I was really big at school. So as a kid, even though I was youngest in the year, born on 1st of August, I was always massive and I was quite strong. I was well coordinated and uh, I loved playing especially rounders in the school playground. The most inspiring sporting memory of my childhood is without doubt the 1990 Soccer Football World Cup Italian 90. Pavarotti singing the theme tune, Paul Gascoigne, Gary Lineker, John Barnes, Paul Parker, Chris Waddle, David Platt, Unbelievable, and it was the first time I really saw what it meant to represent your country and to fight tooth and nail. And there's a really interesting part of that journey as well. I think Paul Gascoigne especially, when he started crying in that semi-final, it portrayed this message to me as a nine-year-old that it's all right to be vulnerable. Like, you know, people talk about men especially crying now in this day and age, or the lack thereof. But my hero, one of my heroes back then in Paul Gascoigne, in that full team, you know, the diverse team that it was, started crying on the biggest of sporting stages. And that meant it was all right. It was all right to be emotional, passionate, because that's what they wanted, they wanted to win. And that put that in jeopardy. So 1998 World Cup, the players throughout that side, for me, was the most inspirational and motivational period of my young sporting life. So I think the moments that made me were in adversity and certainly through some of the injuries that I had in my youth. The worst being as an 18 year old when I pulled my lung adductor off my groin and it was a catastrophic sequence of events in my uh, adductors that meant I ultimately had to miss best part of two years as a player. Now, when you're 18 years old, that's horrendous. You know, that's like career threatening. And it wasn't far off finishing me off before it had all started. But by God's grace, I persevered through it and had to redefine my skills a little bit, become more about fortitude and workload rather than agility, shall we say, and speed. But it was well worth the, the effort in the end. But I would always say as well, you can't be the best version of yourself or achieve your ultimate goals on your own. So I had to play with a very cool, hardworking, benevolent, altruistic, diverse group of individuals who all had a common language, a common cause, a common desire, and ultimately looked after each other. That's what it's all about for me. The selfless concern for the well-being of others, in short, just love. And I see that, saw that through uh, my teammates and the generation of players that are referred to now as the golden generation in a time that we remember as the golden decade. So my, my greatest achievements is making those friends, forging and galvanizing those relationships and ultimately winning plenty of trophies along the way. The trophies, by the way, grand finals, the Challenge Cups, have all started to somewhat degrade and fade from memory. Even the inscription of 2004 on my grand final ring, that's 20 years old, has since disappeared. But the real treasure for me, that which will never disappear, is the friendships that have been made along the way. The way that pursuing my biggest dreams and accomplishments has changed my life and perspective is a multitude of values and lessons um, that I picked up, learned and adopted along the way. I think we're always attracted 
to the people that display the values that we most want to be recognised with. And I guess, I guess those values are for me is one of creating an environment that allows people to fulfil their potential. So it's ultimately about opportunity. How can we use what we've got to give people of all ages and abilities opportunities to thrive? This year, it was impressed upon me, a Pablo Picasso quote that said, the meaning of life is to find a gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. So if you've got a gift and an opportunity to allow that to thrive, you grow and you adopt a purpose. And then you find a tribe, a community, a team to use that purpose and contribute to a bigger whole, to a bigger, to a bigger thing, something that's bigger than you. And I think for me, that is the most fulfilling aspect of life and it's not easy it's simple but it's not easy and quite often it means adopting a fair level of resilience fortitude and the ability to persevere in difficulty but when you find it you find that life is not just happy but even better it's fulfilling and when you can do that collectively with people around you that's immensely special and that's my purpose in life, having had that good gift, that gracious gift of opportunity to fulfill, fulfill my dreams, I want to pay that forward and, and support others to fulfill theirs. What are you good at and how can we use that in the context of a tribe?